This is Patrick Sarge Murray here with Travel to Learn, and we're about to explore the one-of-a-kind old Dallas Museum of Natural History, which is now a remote annex to the Perot Museum in downtown Dallas. Let's go inside and check out the cool architecture and also check out the neat exhibits that are on display, shall we? Let's start with some up-close architectural features, starting with the Acroteria up top, straight out of ancient Greece. And of course, the column facades that we see, what with the vertical lines, these are classic Art Deco features and very tastefully done. Speaking of tastefully done, there's also the detailing along the metal framework, very finely crafted, and another great Art Deco feature. If that's not enough, zooming things out and seeing things on a grander scale, another fine Art Deco feature are the recessed windows themselves, accentuated perfectly with the filleted vertical edges. Very nicely done overall. Of course, the interior space is no less impressive. Check out the squared columns, also vertically grooved. Very much Art Deco. The ceiling treatment is also excellent. The crown molding is convex with Art Deco lines. And of course, the ceiling molding is straight out of ancient Greece. All very tastefully done. They certainly knew what they were doing back in 1936. And of course, the interior space is filled up very, very nicely with some very choice minerals on display. They say that little things add up to big things, and in this case, they are not kidding. Even some of the doors on this floor are works of art. Notice the raised polygonal panel features, and even the doorknob and corresponding locks have plenty of Art Deco ornamentation to them. Another cool little thing I could not help but notice were the gradual recesses in the corners of this large room. It's yet another great Art Deco feature that adds up to a very, very tasteful space overall. Downstairs, we're treated to see the skeleton of an Edophosaurus. This was a reptile that lived from the late Carboniferous through the early Permian periods. In fact, during the last 15 million years of its known existence, according to the fossil record, it was a contemporary of Dimetrodon, which was another reptile that had a sail on its back. But unlike Dimetrodon, whose teeth clearly showed it to be carnivorous, uh, the teeth on Edophosaurus suggest it was a vegetarian instead. Interiors like this in the old museum building are incredibly well preserved. The rich wood paneling, separated by the horizontal metal bars, is a direct throwback to museum interior design of the 1930s. Here we see the Hall of Mammals, and we see mammals that were found in the state of Texas in their natural habitats. Indeed, many, each one of these dioramas on display is a great window into the many different kinds of diverse ecosystems this great state has to offer. As we can see, not all dioramas are created equally. Here we see several taxidermed specimens of elk. Now here's something unusual, a jaguarundi. As you can see, it's a member of the cat family, and it's certainly a type of cat one does not see every day, nor would you given its limited distribution. Look up near the top of the screen and you will find that it is only found in the most extreme parts of South Texas. Speaking of unusual, check out this ringtail, sometimes referred to as a ringtailed cat. But a cat this isn't. It's actually a member of the raccoon family. And unlike its taxidermed diorama mate, the specimen of the jaguarundi, the ringtail takes up a much greater area of the state of Texas. Jaguars here in Texas? Well, according to the diorama information signs, apparently so. Indeed, uh, they were found throughout the southern half of the state in the 19th century, but fewer than a dozen jaguars were recorded in Texas uh, by the 20th century, and sadly none have been seen here in the Lone Star State for many years. Also in the Hall of Mammals is a large diorama of taxidermed bison. Anyhow, moving over to the next exhibit hall on the same floor, we're now entering the Hall of Birds of Prey. One diorama that quickly caught the eye in this hall are these golden eagles depicted in the Davis Mountains in Jeff Davis County. 
out in the Trans-Pecos region of West Texas. Of course you'd expect some bald eagles to be on display. Here they're depicted in the Gulf Coast plains of Aransas County near Corpus Christi. One of the neatest dioramas here in the Birds of Prey Hall is the Caracara and the Harris's Hawks. Notice they're in a thicket of live oak, which is appropriate since they're depicted to be in Live Oak County, located between San Antonio and Corpus Christi. In the exhibit hall across the main floor are more birds and other animals in wetlands environments, such as this, the ivory-billed woodpecker. Funny thing about this impressive species, every time folks think these guys are extinct, they keep coming up with live specimens. In this case, they're depicted in the swamps of southeast Texas. A nice wall display of butterfly specimens never fails to catch my eye, and the best part of this is, these are all butterflies found in Dallas County. For example, go to the lower right corner and you'll see a, a pair of uh, tiger swallowtails, Papilio glaucus. Scroll up a bit and you'll see a very striking pair of California sisters, the brown and orange nymphalids you see there. The queen butterfly, the morning cloak right there in the center. Down there in the lower left corner you see a pipevine swallowtail. Over on the Left hand side there in the middle, you see a polydoma swallowtail, very rare. I need to find one of them. And then, of course, in the upper right corner, you see the biggest of them all, a pair of giant swallowtails, Papilio crispantis. Yes, you will certainly find alligators here in Texas, but uh, they're not evenly distributed throughout the state. That said, the further south and east you go, the better your chances are of encountering them. Uh, all with that in mind, this particular specimen was caught in Dallas County, although that's very much a statistical outlier for its distribution here in Texas. This particular diorama is a great example of the wonderful diversity of birds you will find in South Texas. Here along the Gulf Coast, we see great egrets and roseate spoonbills. As neat as all these downstairs exhibits were, to me, they were just a warm-up act. The real action was upstairs, so that's where I headed next. When I first visited here years ago, and we came up to the second floor, we saw an Acrocanthosaurus skeleton on display. Needless to say, I was hoping to see it again. But as I ascended to the second floor this time, it wasn't there, much to my disappointment. This is a mystery worth further investigation. With no Acrocanthosaurus in sight, I then turned my attention towards potential consolation prizes instead. One such consolation prize stared me right in the face as I ascended the steps, a Cryolophosaurus skull. This is really cool, as one so rarely sees this skull up close in person like this. Its name means Cold Crested Lizard, and it's derived from two things, the obvious being the very prominent, very distinct crest atop its skull. The second derivation is the fact that it was found in Antarctica. Now granted this was 195 million years ago when it lived, and Antarctica was not the massive giant ice cube floating at the bottom of the earth like it is today. It was further up north and thus the temperature was much milder. But fossil evidence does suggest that it did have winter weather on the continent even during that time. Which is a fascinating thing to ponder unto itself since most of the dinosaurs lived in tropical latitudes. It's a fascinating species regardless. Another cool thing to see right when you walk up, this Diplodocus femur. This was sure neat. Here I found some bones and most of the skull of a Xyphactinus, a large predatory fish that roamed to the vast inland sea that covered much of the middle part of the United States during the Cretaceous period. Check out those teeth. Here's something Dallas can truly claim its own, a fully recreated model of a species of marine reptile discovered in Dallas and named after the city. Dallasaurus, which lived 92 million years ago and has become a species prized by scientists who view it as a missing link in Mosasaur evolution. Here are a couple of detailed pictures of this recreated model of Dallasaurus. 
Notice the webbed feet. Mesosaurs also had this feature. They were a smaller species of aquatic reptile from the Triassic period. Behold this huge specimen of ammonite. It measures two feet across, and it was found right here in Dallas County. As is usually the case, the beauty is in the details. Behold this amazingly intricate suture pattern on the outer layer of this magnificent specimen. Speaking of consolation prizes, this certainly hits the spot. This is a cast of the famous Dinosuchus skull, which was reconstructed for the American Museum of Natural History. The reconstruction was based on skull fragments that were discovered at Big Bend National Park by an expedition sponsored by that famous museum in New York City back in 1940. That being said, there is a problem with this reconstruction. They estimated its length to be too long. Subsequent fossil discoveries in the decades that followed showed that it had actually a shorter skull. So whereas this incredible specimen is over five feet long, in reality it should have been about four and a half feet long. This in turn, uh, with the subsequent fossil discoveries, has caused us to re-examine and re-evaluate just how long this species actually was, which again was Dinosuchus. It was first estimated to be about 50 feet long, which would have made it the largest crocodilian ever to live on the Earth. But the new revised estimated length is about 35 feet long, which would still make it 15 feet longer than uh, a saltwater crocodile at 20 feet long living today. So, still pretty darn incredible. Thank you very much. That's it for right now in exploring the old Natural History Museum that's uh, now part of the Perot Museum Group, my friends. If you have a nice Saturday afternoon here in Dallas to spend, and come here and explore Fair Park and drop by this old place. It's, it costs only a dollar to get in and we, we'll be able to see all the neat things they do have inside there. <laughs> that's money well spent. That's all we have for this episode, uh, and so be sure to check back to, for, for more episodes that are soon to come. And in the meantime, keep exploring, keep discovering, and keep learning. That's, this is Patrick Sarge Murray for Travel to Learn, and we'll see each other again soon. Enjoy.